<laughs> We're live. We are live for the last live session of the day. <laughs> oh, I, I shouldn't sound too excited. About it, I'm running out of words and speech. I no, I mean, voice. if you were excited in, in about half an hour when it was finished, then that might be an issue. You can be excited at the start <laughs> yeah. of our chat. I don't mind. I have a problem with that. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's fine. If you oh, go, yay, yeah. that's done, then I'd be slightly bit, oh, right, okay. Got him out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Best till last, eh? Wait, I shouldn't say Let's that. Let's go with that. <laughs> no, I've loved everyone that's been on today. It's been really good. And, uh, yeah, so this session, Mr. Ed Goodman of Freelance Heroes fame. So the other big chief in the freelance world, really, aren't you? You are. <laughs> well, Ed, Ed, I don't know. Ed, I don't know. <laughs> I'm never going to feel comfortable seeing that in myself necessarily, but you know, I like to think that. Really? Um, I guess I'd like to see it as you know uh, that um, freelance heroes has has generally made a difference in people's lives. That's that's more how I would see it rather than me being the big chief as such. Yeah, but I think that yeah, I know I know what you're saying there, but I do think like you are at the helm of that, and you've created that community where it is fabulous. Um. Uh, how many thousand are in there now? It's huge, isn't it? Twelve and a half. Twelve and a half thousand, which is, and from so many different <laughs> kind of yeah, it is. Because when you first said some last year, it was about eleven at the time or something, and I was like, good grief, I didn't even realise there was that many in there. But it is a great community that's been built with everyone supporting each other and answering each other's questions and picking each other up. Or, Do you know what I love most about the community now is that when someone does post something a little bit too self-promotional in the comments or they um or someone is just being a bit disrespectful i'll get a mm. private message from a member of the group who's reported the post through the group tools and has sent me a message going i think we need to to check this one out and it could be anything it, you know it's but what i like is that the the purpose of the group and the the kind of values of the community are now so ingrained in so many of the members that they know what their barriers are. They don't even try to self-promote yeah. themselves as much as they used to during the the week outside of the midweek selfie. And they do support, you know, they do report posts um, that they don't like. And, and I love that because I don't have um, moderators to, to moderate the group. I don't need to, you know, it's had quite strict rules about how it works, but the way people have behaved throughout, I think has been, has been brilliant. I've loved it. Yeah, and there's, there's a genuine ethos of people go there for help and to help others, don't they? So that, you know, that's against the thing of being self -aware. Because I know I, I tried to put a post at one point, didn't you? said, oh, I can't allow this. And, and I was like, oh, God, yeah, of course not. And then um, it's just one of those things. That's, <laughs> I know. It irks me when it's people I truly like as well. But there you go. You know, rules are rules. <laughs> Well, no, and that's absolutely right. And like I say, afterwards, I was like, oh, yeah, of course not. But, you know, like in that moment, you forget what the rules are. So some people will genuinely put things in that shouldn't be there. But then it's also about how the community deal with it. And they're not just attacking them. Or, you know, I see that on, like, rabbit groups and stuff where people are just going hell for leather at others <laughs> group because they don't oh, like the local facebook groups i mean yes. they're, they're often some of the the strangest conversations let alone people on earth that you now realize live on your doorstep um that, that yeah, on those i think you know i don't i don't know i don't have a god complex i don't try and be um uh police it too much um i just I mean, it's just really two simple rules, you know, don't self-promote yourself and don't be annoying you know, and, and be respectful. Um, yeah. And and I think that's, it's, you know, it's not too, um, we don't do it in life. We don't put up with it. You know, if you went to, um, if you went to a party and someone just spent their whole time talking about themselves, about what they do and didn't ask you any questions, didn't seek your, you'd be bored stupider than at some point, neck your drink and disappear as quickly as you could. And a community needs to, yeah. Um, it needs to follow that same kind of idea as well. And and that's the, you know, but ultimately yeah. we try and freelance heroes to to follow that too. And that's why the portal has been created from the ideas yeah. of the heroes and, and why it's evolved from there. It just made me laugh because I, I once went, it was not long before I met Graham, went on a date with someone just to like a coffee shop. And he just talked about himself nonstop for about an hour and a half. And as we left, he went, it's been really nice to learn about you. And, and, and I, I was just like, tell me one thing. <laughs> I literally just sat there and I went, 
I mean, yeah, it's it just is. well done for sticking it out for so long. Quite frankly, I think I would have surreptitiously got. I think I haven't worked out how to send a message on my phone without anyone seeing it simply says the word call me Help. i had to do that once <laughs> i had to do i had to i was in sunderland i was delivering a, uh, uh i was doing some call center training up there um and it turns out one of the call handlers was um in the bar at the hotel that i was staying in and you know she was chatting away and she got a new dog and she was showing me pictures of a dog and um my phone beeped and it turns out it was a BBC News alert or something. So I said, oh, I've just got to reply to this. And I messaged my wife saying, call me. <laughs> and she phoned me. And I just, she was just like, she had no idea what I was doing. Really? Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me more. I'm going to be back in a minute. And I just... <laughs> you just don't read yourself, no, Ed. <laughs> you I mean, I'm really hoping she's not watching well. this. <laughs> But if you do that to anyone now in this community, if I do that like, to anyone, I know what's yeah, going on? <laughs> <laughs> never out your tricks. Never out your tricks. That's... <laughs> no, it's really you can true. Have that though, one. None of the others. <laughs> yeah, true. You can have that one for free. <laughs> uh, That's it. I remember you posting a while back about a guy that had basically just messaged going, "How can I get my book out to all your community or something?" And it was someone that had never even been in the group. Or, and I remember replying saying, "Well, first engage in the group. The second help other people." And it's, it's that real thing, isn't it? Of you're going to get the most out of the group if you put stuff in. You're not there to just, like you say, selfless promotion and. But that's a life thing, right? I mean, because shit. there is so every Wednesday for anyone watching who's not part of the group, we have the midweek selfie thread which is a thread where people can talk about blogs they've written news they've got events you know maybe just uh, my website's had whatever it is it's just it's that outlet of self-promotion and the number of people who post in the midweek selfie thread but go, don't get involved in any other aspect of the week mm. and then when i meet them or when i um when they try and post something the rest of the week i go no it's for the midweek selfie yeah but I don't get anything from the midweek selfie. And my answer is, well, many do, but they're the mm. ones like you, Helen, for a start. And there's others as well who, um, who say, look, you know, I've, I've actually done really well out of freelance heroes, but they've never posted. What they've done is yeah. they've just commented. And it's like you say, I mean, it's a life lesson, isn't it? You know, you get yeah. what you give. And if you approach life in a way of, of giving, and if you approach the community in the way of what value can you add, then A, you'll stand out more in itself. And B, at the moment you do need help, you'll find that people are more than willing to, you know, to add it because they see the values within you from the way you approach that community. Um, oh, so, I, you know, it doesn't matter what community you're in. It's, it's about just, you know, being part of a collective. And we all work by ourselves. That's why we choose to be, to be freelancers. But we can learn so much from the many others that are there too, which is why I use the adage, no freelancer is an island, probably more hey, than I should. There we go. <laughs> we got it in. <laughs> yeah, Hang on, eight and a half up. minutes, but it was coming at some point. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. <laughs> I just waiting for like 30 seconds. <laughs> and to be fair, it was in my intro that I never ended up reading out because I've just missed them all today. We just end up chatting straight away. But yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's been, a, I must admit, community has been the running theme of today, but that's too right that it is because, like, I've written the book and it's not just my story, it's nine other people's as well. And then there's other people mentioned in there, like yourself and, and Steve and a number of other freelancers. And a, bit, a large part of my success has been the community and their support. And it's not just when times are crap, it's when, even when you've got something to celebrate and, you know, you can go, hooray, I've just won this client, or, you know, whatever it is, or oh, thank God I got rid of this horrendous client, <laughs> whatever this celebration is, they're there with you, and they totally get it. They And, you know, they will celebrate with you, and it's, it's, it's not just about I need help, or I've done this wrong, or what do I do with this tax return, or <laughs> all that stuff. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what you do as a freelancer, um, and in fact, we're all the same. If you strip away that that um a level of service that we provide the, the the job that we get paid to do take that away we all are the same we all have the same challenges around finance marketing admin etc and um whatever you're thinking whatever you're feeling 
others have felt the same guaranteed yeah. and uh, and yeah. i totally agree with you it's not about doom and gloom and sharing what's wrong it's important to have that outlet it's critical i think that we have a safe network that we can suddenly reach out to um but equally as well you know it's there to share the highs too without fear of judgment without fear of of coming across in the wrong way because it's how we approach the community but we should celebrate our wins with our community yeah. as much as we should um seek support through our lows too and, and that's where the real value adds there's one story that i've told more than any other um and it's when there is a freelancer who in it was about two years ago she posted a post saying that she had 66 pence left in her account and that was it yeah. and she yeah. didn't know what to do and she ended up with uh, a load of comments in the thread but she private messaged me later on that night it was on a sunday i remember it saying that she was just overwhelmed with how many options for solutions she now had she had two pages of a4 notes that she could then implement no one judged her no one belittled her for getting to that point that actually she now had a list of solutions that she could then implement and that was in, that was just invaluable to her and it's um it, for me it's the greatest story so far of which there may be others i just don't know about but the, it's the greatest story so far of what underpins a real strong community because we are in a situation where we can drive for our success and no one should tell us what success should look like it's entirely up to you it's our job what success global domination we don't all want to build multinational corporations many of us want to just continue to trade at the level that we're trading at and that's okay um, yeah it's about understanding what your definition of success is but on your route to that goal just you know put your arm around one or two others metaphorically because you know COVID, but help them on route as well and and see where you can um, help them over their hurdles while you're looking to achieve yours because that support will need, be needed back at you at some point too and, and if we all do it what a greater place the world would be i felt like that was a sermon <laughs> oh, no. well. you've got alien on me helen you've got alien on me Oh, I wasn't coming through the issues today. When you're on all day, you can't rely on technology to. Hear me now? Not again. Um. Oh. Nothing wrong with my headset. No. Oh, you can't hear me anyway. Might as well talk to me. I can say anything now and Helen can't hear me. Oh, you can. Okay, fair enough. Well, that ruined that plan. Can you hear you? Can you hear me? I can. can I can? Yeah, good. But I can't hear you through these. So I don't know why it wants them plugged in. <laughs> I can. That's why I put my AirPods away because it was just playing through there, and I had nothing playing through them. So I was like, "Oh, put them away." <laughs> Switch me off. I don't oh, think it's God, possible. Technology. Who'd think I work with technology for a living, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but yes, I absolutely agree with the sermon. Is what I was saying. And then I was Thank you. Say, what was I saying? Um, I don't. Oh God. Well, that's well and truly gone out of my head now, hasn't I it? I threw you. I threw you. Well, no, the headphones threw me. I, I was about so to sermon back at you about something about. Uh... So I was talking about success and bringing others oh, yes. on the route. No, there yeah, you go. it was that because, funnily enough, there is a chapter about you know living by your own blooming success and all this about you must build a team. You've got to earn six figures. You've got to blah 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 blah. blah. No, you know, really look at what is important to you and the values that I was just talking about this in one of the earlier sessions. Um, you know what the experiences i had in employment helped me really define the values I, i've taken forward in the business like having flexibility being able to be creative being able to be myself all these things that they're what's important to me now and my success is to have a business where i have those things not i've got to hire a team or whatever else you know other people are saying or to work your way up a ladder to ceo or it just doesn't do it for me at all and it's not right for my personality either so I think the working world demonstrated that for me. 
<laughs> I think that's part of the uh, I think that's part of the challenge with the image problem that freelancing has as well. Yeah. Is that um and I've had a number of people say this and, and what people call themselves, I, I often get um criticized for thinking that every freelancer should call themselves a freelancer, that I'm protective of the name. And in a way that's true, but I don't think everyone should call themselves a freelancer. Whatever mm -hmm. people call themselves is entirely up to you that's yeah. uh, that's not for me or anyone else to say i'm protective over freelance because i don't believe it should be misconstrued as someone with um you know low aspirations low because you know having yeah. staying where you are at the moment not earning three figures or sorry six figures is not <laughs> it's not like three figures i think yeah, different story <laughs> not earning six figures um is um it's not a case of low aspiration it's a case of sat it's a case of satisfying your personal wants and needs and yeah, i think freelancers have, play a part in achieving bigger businesses goals and helping them play a bigger business goal it it's a, plays a part in businesses striving to their goal and let those bigger businesses be the bigger businesses if they want to but yeah. us as freelancers um have our own kind of aspirations for that and i i i, I I, I sometimes it really does irk me when I see freelancers being put in the same pool as the fivers and the people per hour and the five pound for yeah. a logo. Um, yeah. Because we're so much more than that. You oh, know, we're, sure. we're shaping the future of work. Um, we're a collective, we are individual at the same time, we come with bucket loads of experiences from other clients that we've worked with. You know, when you're talking to us, you're not having to deal with department to department, we're the negotiators, we're the people that provide that end product, we're the ones with the skill that you need to and that should be celebrated. Whether you define that as a freelancer or something else is entirely down to the individual. But that should be celebrated. But I often feel that it's misconstrued that if you don't have the dreams to build a, a big multi-employee agency or you don't have the dreams of being that ceo or being six seven thousand six seven figure um uh, uh company value then you don't fall into that at all and that couldn't be further from the truth oh absolutely um yeah sermon amazing no i agree 100 no. i mean like I say, it, for me, it was about getting this flexibility and getting able to balance back in my life, which admittedly at times I'd stamp all over that one myself with the hours of working, but it's my choice to do that. And I'm doing it for my benefit, not for someone else's and some boss. And and it, it gives you so much control back as well. But this whole thing, this notion of, well, put it this way, I this is something that I'll bring up in Emory in the, the call later, um, obviously that's pre-recorded, but I saw someone write online last year that freelancers are just people that can't get a proper job. And I was just like, what? <laughs> the? <laughs> but then I was like, you know what? You stick with that little delusion. You stay in your little employed world. And we, I think we're glad we haven't got you. You know, that's not the mentality that is in the freelance world. But I, I ended up doing a video <laughs> once at a train station while waiting for a train late at night because someone told me this and i had to you know come roll my sleeves up and go right you're right actually freelancing isn't a proper job it's jobs plural yes. it's the chief technology officer chief marketing officer chief finance officer chief strategist the logistics and deliverables and admin and customer support and dare i say it, credit control as well it's all of those <laughs> it's jobs not job it's multi-skilled careers um which um which so many others aren't and it's not a them and us and it yeah. never should be and, and i remember coming across a freelancer who said they don't call themselves a freelancer because it evokes um it, it doesn't show that they're willing to grow and, and it was kind of seeing it from a little side of it but it doesn't work and i once saw a business who has a community of like a um a fiver type business but they have a community of freelancers that they outsource work to and their strap line was agency work at freelancer prices oh i just i mean i i, I know that if i outed them they just would have had a torrid of negativity thrown at them but you know that's not my um, that's not my style and it's and that's why i'm protective about the the image of freelancer being actually what it should be for there are two million freelancers in the uk almost five million self-employed the voting pool is huge which is why i think there should be a um a government minister for the creative industries related to that but you know i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon um because you know we represent so much in our own world in our own families but for the wider business community too and for the wider uk economy 
do you think there's been a big shift with this though during the pandemic because i've certainly seen some of it that people are starting to realize things that us freelancers knew all along <laughs> about well i can work more flexibly and i can still do my job even if you know i'm choosing my hours and and i think certainly the employees are realizing but whether the employers are i've still yet to be seen but well, it's really interesting. And I think, you know, we're seeing now a narrative that the government is insisting that people go back into an office, which shows that they don't get it. Um, I was just, I'll just get you some feedback there a little bit. Um, it was um, it was like Brian May warming up his electric guitar. But, uh, but the, <laughs> I don't know why him in particular. Um, <laughs> but the um, so we're seeing this narrative that we should all go back and work into an office, um, which, of course, we know is just not necessary. I think um, there was an article in the paper over the weekend that said, you know, Londoners went to work in an office even when they were being attacked during the Blitz. I mean, admittedly, when we not, you know, so uh, may, not everyone had access to the Internet, let alone telephones, yeah. let alone uh, electricity um, uh, in many cases, too. And I think it's, you know, actually the world has changed and smart employers are understanding how that's working. Google way pre-pandemic would say to their engineers your task is to complete this by then now how you do that when you do that your job what resources you need to support in or out the office entirely up to you but that's your deadline that's when it needs to be delivered by and we'll throw every support you need to achieve it and and i think companies are seeing that more and more because actually some people do want to commute every day some people yeah. want to work from home every day and i think i'm going to go as far as to assume most people want something in between who are employed yeah want something in between and i'd like to think that over time we'll see a rise of co-working spaces on the high street as well which will be good for the high street um uh, yeah. uh, uh too but um mm -hmm. yeah when when it all starts when the kind of covid thing starts to settle down it will be interesting to see how the um uh the business landscape kind of looks and feels then but um i think there's still some surprises ahead of us yes well yeah i mean no one can i think this last 18 months have shown that no one can predict where anything's going right now can we but yeah i'd, I'd hope there's certainly been some shift to more flexible working for people if needed like you say it's find that balance of even if they did three days in the office and two at home or something just give them that bit of trust it, that's the big thing for me i just felt like the that world the employment world and corporate world they didn't trust their staff to work at home or whatever. They just thought you'd be sat at home on the settee with biscuits or something. But, you know, it works both ways. Give your staff respect. Oh, I'm sat at my desk staff. with biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, honestly, there's, there's a biscuit theme this afternoon, so we're all right. <laughs> yeah. It's because Steve Holland's been on. Steve, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a good chat about the biscuits. But yeah, that was that was a huge thing for me that I really benefited from being allowed, allowed to work from home one day a week. And then that was taken away from me because they didn't trust one member of staff to do it. So they took it away for everybody. And that's just the But wrong... that's a much bigger issue. That's, yeah. a, that's about them, not about the individual. If you don't trust yeah, your exactly. employees to do the job, then you're not inspiring yeah. them and something's not right. But then also, I think companies might realise that this um, will... Uh, and it's odd that we're talking so much about the employment side of it, but then I think freelancers will benefit too, because one of the things is that companies will often look for support employees and freelancers within their immediate locality, yes, um, because they wanted to meet them for a coffee and see if there was a value. And of course, we were then forced into a, a, a digital world that many already were in beforehand. I get that, but many have chosen not to in quite the intensity that we have. And then suddenly realizing, okay, I still can have a proper relationship with you as a um bigger business freelancer or as an employer employee and i can still have this conversation with you and we can still work closely together and i don't need to be in the same coffee shop or the office for that to happen so if i can do that with you who lives five miles down the road i can do that with anyone and suddenly the pool of talent available to me as a company both from an employee, but also from an, and I guess, you know, from an employee's perspective, it's different because you still want to have company get togethers. You still want to come into the office maybe once a week or twice a week. Mm -hmm. But from a freelance perspective, I can now pick the best of the skills that I need from someone who's a hundred miles away or further. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't need them to be there. And, uh, and then suddenly that's going to benefit my business more. And it makes freelancers sharper too, because they realize they can work with clients anywhere even more. 
we've known this for so long anyway but it's almost like it's the pandemic has opened our eyes um more uh i don't know it's more vividly and i think yeah. from that perspective it's um uh it, it's going to make the future of work um i think more more powerful and i think relationships between the more freelancing opportunities are going to be far greater as well and it's it's it will be exciting to see i'm i'm a bit of an optimist in that sense yeah, yeah. i mean i obviously being i don't know if it's different because i mean online learning where you're all digitized anyway but obviously for the last three years i've been working with companies in finland and spain and and, and stuff so it's been really interesting for me to now see the rest of the world go oh we can open that because i was already doing that and it it's great it was so enjoyable and you know i've got this like the company in finland are so lovely their way of working is is just remarkable and laid back and and they're a great team and i've really enjoyed working with them and yeah okay they still wanted me in the office every now and again but i got a trip to hell for sinky for it so i'm, I'm all right with that but <laughs> and in fact if, if any of the others international want me going I'm, yeah I'm okay with that. <laughs> but yeah a project i've just taken on they'd actually tried to hire another freelancer first who was based in croydon and said no to going into the center of london to just go in once every two weeks so when they spoke to me in Yorkshire, they were like, oh, well, you're not going to want to come in. I was like, once every two weeks, that's fine. You know, it's bizarre. But obviously that person had a boundary that stopped them wanting to do that. Um, but for me, I was just like, well, it's quicker than, you know, Helsinki. <laughs> Although saying well, that. You'd like to think so. With um, LNER and King's Cross trains, it probably won't be. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and it, it has. It really has started to open up those boundaries, I think, that people started to look further afield. But um yeah, I don't know if there was another thought coming there, and then it's, it's no. But I think it. that's it. I, th I think companies will start to realise then mm. that they don't need to um, to do that, uh, and they don't need to source someone. And actually, they can put when they're putting role profiles out onto the likes of Indeed or or wherever. Um, mm. Then they can they can put their remote, and they don't really care where it is, as long as you can deliver on these skills. And if you're an employer looking at this, or if you're searching for a freelancer, please don't put minimum X number of years experience. It's going to drive freelancers bonkers. Yeah. I just, it baffles me when I see companies do that. Yeah, no, I, I, God, I, I've given up with job descriptions a long time. <laughs> I think teaching battered them out of me, but yeah. <laughs> I remember there was one a few years ago, I haven't seen it now, where it said minimum 10 years social media experience and i think actually had it been around that long yeah. <laughs> and then that particular time was ours now but um but yeah it's, oh um, god yeah i it's think funny. back then it would have just been texting 40 odd characters on the phone or something wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> good god yeah i mean it's interesting that you said though we end up talking more about the employed side because part of this that i'm doing and in the book is that I can still see with some freelancers that they're still stuck in that employed mindset. And that was part of the reason why I've written this, that people say, no, well, I have to be at my desk nine to five and I have to be this and that. And because their clients are telling them that. And actually, it, yes, it takes courage to step back and go, actually, no, you know, these are the times I'm working this week or well, what have you. Um, but it, for those that have moved from that life to now being self-employed, it can be really hard to shake that off, can't it? And the, the expectation that you think you still carry of what you should be doing yeah i think that's just you know that will change over time of course yeah. and and uh, and maybe the pandemic has opened our eyes up it'd be interesting to see now the furlough scheme has ended whether more will go mm. freelance and also when com if companies decide they want to dictate that their employees go into the office every day whether people think but i don't have to it's not the only option available to me mm. um, but of course you know for you you can't just go freelancing and think it's a it's it's a breeze. And if you That's can cool. get the best of both worlds, where you can part time work and freelance to start with to build up, then I think that's the best solution. Certainly yeah. in that initial period. But you know, it's um, as you know, because you're such an active part of them. That whoever, whatever we do, and however much experience we've got, no one has the ability or capacity to do everything themselves. You need to have that outlet you need to have that support and that's where the strength of your community comes from oh definitely i mean the, you know the non-negotiables for me were hiring an accountant and a financial advisor and then you know hiring a va has been a, a key thing and, and it's so nice to be able to hire freelancers for these roles so that you are still keeping it within the community and passing that work on and yeah it, it, it's, a, it's a lovely little kind of connection building place that you can 
you know, when people come to you with work that's not right for you, you can pass it on to someone you know in the community. And this is why, you know, get that's active great. in people if you're not, because there's so much of that going on. And, you know, like I've been talking to quite a few copywriters today and stuff that they really do set up their little networks because they all have their own little niches, like one will be health, one will be leisure, one will be... And if it's someone comes to them for one that's not right, they pass it to the other and then it comes back. And, you know, I've had that with someone that they've passed me um, some work that's turned into two years of work for me in three phases. And it was just because it wasn't right for him. And he passed it to me. I think this is better for you. And, yeah, two years of work. And I'm now just about to start on the next phase. And that that wouldn't have happened i wouldn't have got that job if if he hadn't recommended me for it so but i think also you didn't approach the relationship with the expectation of looking no. for that no we that, just... that's that's the big big yeah. difference but it's a small difference if that makes sense yeah because it doesn't take a lot to just go in as you said earlier on to go into community and help others and when you do that people see you in a different light and can provide yeah. doesn't mean that everyone who follows that same rule is going to get two years of work but you're going to get more no, out of no. it anyway no, and that, I mean, that's just more because I work in big projects generally, but, you know, mine aren't smaller ones, but that was just because me and him had chatted on a course we were both on and, you know, both at the back of the room, chunning him in a way and did a paired activity together. And, yeah, a few weeks later, he passed me some work. And that's just because we got on and we chatted. And who wouldn't want that? <laughs> I know, absolutely. It sounds yeah. brilliant. Yeah, so I don't know. and Yeah, I think it's that... There's a dawning realisation sometimes, like on Freelance Heroes Day with Sharon, when she said about she'd hung on the edges for a long time and then, you know, she suddenly realised that actually all these people are there and building this community and she'd been missing it. And it it, it is a powerful thing to be part of. And I absolutely think it's been part of my success. So, yeah. And it's a wondrous thing. And you don't have to reveal everything about yourself and your personality. No. And you don't have to take advice from everyone. Although the more viewpoint, and we, and you're certainly not going to meet people who think exactly like you, but that's a good thing. Um, yeah. And but there is there is right now, whether it's in your town or your village or your city, certainly online, people who are more than happy to share their stories and experiences with you. You've just got to be yeah. brave and go out and find them and ask for it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's so nice now. Like now we're the world's opening up a little bit again for us and. You know, I've already met up with two freelancers in the last couple of weeks and I've got two more now booked in to meet them in the flesh and then I'm going to meet oh, no, Sophie and to Sarah this week. And, oh, it's lovely to then, you know, make actual friends with these people. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Talking of which, yeah. um, I went through your list of questions that you wanted to ask for today, skipped them until it said, and a question from your mum. Yes, I was just going to ask you this one. So mum is listening because she's she's recording all the key points of the conversations for me for a little <laughs> and this is this is the one later. and so mum says have you considered following her advice yet about a career in radio radio or tv uh, well so um i'd love it i mean as <laughs> I, I think i have more of a face for radio than tv um <laughs> but um uh I'd love uh, a job. I had a six-week radio show on the local BBC radio station, oh. uh, which was meant to be. It wasn't like it was a radio show that then failed our six weeks. It was a six-week <laughs> series, uh, which went very well. And um, uh, and you know, I'd love a, a career in radio at some point, but oh, um, yeah. it's know. never too late. Never say never <laughs> is well, all no, I'm going indeed. to say. But um, no, I yeah. think uh, uh, yeah, I think I don't know whether I'd want a talk show or a music show. I don't know. Maybe your mum should be my agent. Well, yeah, why not? Get on it, mum. She'll get on it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you did ask when your next quiz was as well the other day. So I was like, I don't well, know. of course, so I don't know. I mean, if we go into some any form of localised lockdown or mini lock, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a Christmas quiz. Oh, um, yeah. I think that needs to be done just to revisit for them because they were good fun, the online quizzes. Yeah. But as the world opened up, the need for them became less and less. Um, but they certainly served a purpose. And I was. Delighted yeah. at how generous people were to raise so much money too, but they were good fun. I enjoyed it, even though I couldn't see anyone. Yeah, they true. were um, <laughs> they were good fun. But no, maybe we'll do one in time for Christmas. Yeah, sounds like a plan. I think. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Brilliant. right. Well, thank you very much for promise. inviting yeah. me on. This flew by, isn't it? Thank you, I know it has. The day has. I just, uh, yeah. I bet it has. <laughs>
all day and then like I say i'll crash in about half an hour but um and this is yeah. a fair, this is this whole this this goes back to everything that we've talked about so far which is that when you approach communities and relationships with fellow freelancers from a um a more open and collaborative way and be what you give that means that when something as brilliant as your book is launching that means that of course people are going to be willing to help you yeah because even though you didn't do it with the viewpoint of well when i write a book in a few years time i know i can call it them it just so happened that you have written a book then you can call them and people are going yeah. yes because you're amazing and um oh, so i wish you every success with the book uh yeah, it doesn't need you. it but i wish you every success with it <laughs> thank you you get me going in a minute <laughs> no i honestly the, the freelance communities and you and steve and, and every and everyone in it have been a rock this year so i am gonna go now <laughs> <laughs> the first tears of the day <laughs> no, um, yeah no it, i've been gushing about the freelance community all day um but yeah the they're amazing absolutely amazing so thank you well, to you and to, you're an into, you're an amazing uh, part of it thank you oh now i think i can have a prosecco surely <laughs> yeah go for it <laughs> I know, are over. my nose has even gone red oh yeah no that's brilliant thank you well so enjoy much. the rest of your day and um okay. and yeah we'll catch up soon and uh, yes. thank you very much again for letting me be a part of this um or advise me to be such a part of it Thank you. <laughs> Where do I go in again? End. Uh, uh.